Which one is this one? Yeah, this is meatloaf. Character? Is this meatloaf? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> anyway. It's not my pirate. I <laughs> may tie me in the bed. <laughs> anyway, so anyway. Oh, my God. So anyway. Um, uh, Fine, how are you? Oh, great. Uh, meatloaf, how come? How come? Yeah. Ah, for 21 years, how come? They call me that, um, I got that name playing football in the United States. Football is different than football, uh, you know. It's, um, in fact, I heard that you played football some in, yeah. when you were in New York in Central Park, <laughs> and I wanted true. to know if you liked the tackling business. Uh -huh. well, anyway. Uh, well, anyway, we won't talk uh, about that. Uh, they have it in restaurants all the time in America. <laughs> they know what's going on. It's, it's you know, a meatloaf. I don't know if people, do you know, do you know what meatloaf is? Do you yeah, actually yeah, know? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a food. Shut you do. What? Shut right on. Yes. Okay. Anyway, you started with a band, and then... And then uh, I had a band, and we started in California, and uh, the band moved into Detroit, and we started uh, oh, opening to, we opened that band open, then it changed its name, it changed its name because we were in the psychedelic 60s, and we changed our name to the Popcorn Blizzard. Oh, <laughs> boy, was that a name. After that band broke up, um, I got into hair, and uh, the, the musical the hair. Musical? Yeah, now you're going to ask me if I did the nude scene. I know that. Well, no, actually, I got paid not to do it. I don't have it. to ask anything. <laughs> actually, I, I got paid seventeen fifty a week not to do it. Uh -huh. um, what part did you have in here? Oh, I did a lot of, <laughs> I did a lot of different parts. Uh -huh. Oh, you know, I didn't do uh, one of the leads, but um, I did... Uh, did you get I it? Was, I was always off stage changing clothes, so... Uh -huh. Did I get what? I got it. Did I get what? You were uh, going to ask me? From uh, your singing ability? Yeah, from my from singing. Your... I went and I sang a song... An old blues song, because nobody knew how to play it, called The World Is All Right, But The People, They Make It Bad. Uh-huh. Okay. Sing it? <laughs> what, are you yeah. crazy? <laughs> anyway, no, The yeah. World Is All Right, And The People, They Make It Bad. And, uh, and out of that, you met... Uh, <laughs> that was the director, by the way, that I was speaking to, when he went like this. He went, sing it. I decided, oh, I'm not going to sing. We're, we're yeah, talking. You got now. the part anyway. Anyway, I only got about four hours sleep. What, do you expect me to do, sing? I'm mean, crazy. <laughs> Anyway, you are it's, it's Peter, the director, behind the camera, and uh, you don't see him now, but I'm sure before the season goes off, you will. Okay. Oh, meatloaf. Yes, dear. Uh, well, hair, and then James Diamond. Uh, the two of you start, uh, decided that you wanted to be a team, and, and he's no, it, we didn't. Songs. We didn't decide. I, I, uh, I forced him into it. Uh -huh. He wanted to be an artist. He wanted to sing. He wanted to sing his own songs, uh -huh. and I. Uh, I had a lot of dinners with him, and, and he loved spaghetti, so I gave him a lot of spaghetti and invited him over for a lot of stuff, and, and eventually I coaxed him into uh, working with me. Uh -huh. And um, he, uh, then we had a lot of arguments on if I could do his songs very good, and I told him I'd do them better than anybody. Bad Out of Hell took a long time to get going. We changed five labels before it actually came out, and oh, I didn't think it was coming out. I really didn't think it was coming out, and the only reason that Bad Out of Hell ever came out was there's a song on Bad Out of Hell called Took the Words Right Out of My Mouth, and somebody liked the first 10 seconds and thought it could be a hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the only well, reason in, that album ever came out. In the beginning, it was very slow for you, wasn't it? After Bad Out of Hell was released. But then all of a sudden, you started selling records and it sold like 7 million yeah, copies it took up about, to now. Or, yeah, 7 or 8. I don't yeah. know. You know, they hype, you know, they'll hype you to death. Yeah. I've heard as many as 12 and as few as 8. So they'll, who <laughs> knows? That, I don't know. I know it sold a lot. <laughs> you know, that's all I know. That was uh, 78, though, and then uh, now you come up with your second album, that's... Dead Ringer. Dead Ringer, 1981, it's three years in between. What's the biggest difference between uh, Dead Ringer and Bad Out of Hell? You, you still the biggest difference between yeah. Dead Ringer and Bad Out of Hell is that, that Dead Ringer is more me. Uh, I, took that, I took the project over and basically redid everything. I worked on it for about 13 months, and that's me, and I... Uh, um, it's, it, to me, it's not as perfect as Bad Out of Hell. Bad Out of Hell is a perfect kind of record. Everything's in its place. This one, it's like, if the, if the feeling was there, this one has, to me, I mean, Bat's a great record. I love Bad Out of Hell. Mm -hmm. uh, there's I no getting around it. Uh, but this one's more personal. I think this album is a little more personal, and it's got more guitars, and I love guitars. In fact, mm -hmm. on my stage show, at one point in my stage show, I have nine guitars on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus. I love guitars. I mean, there has never, I, I checked facts, and there has never been a band that had nine guitars on stage. Uh -huh. And so I, uh, I'm going to put nine guitars on stage. What's next in your life, well, I'm, except from the world tour? With a tour, yeah. and that's about, that's, that's the life. Uh, it's about a year, probably 14 months. And then I take time to recover from that. See, the thing is that I, I now know what to do after a tour. Before, I see, I didn't know what to do. Now I know what psychiatrist to see, and I know also, you know, what... Where to go and you know and relax and how to how to how to.
combat the war. Because when you go on tour, you you start selling a record or you go on promotion, and it's, it's like going to war. In this show, though, you won't uh, perform live. We're going to see a videotape that you made uh, from uh, your latest album, Dead Ringer, and it's the title song. It's called Dead Ringer for Love, actually. Dead Ringer for Love. Dead Ringer and, for Love. Uh, Does it? Do you know? Do you know? By the way, I'm going to ask you a question <laughs> now. Uh, do you know what Dead Ringer means? Do you understand the term Dead Ringer? No, I don't. Okay. I didn't think you did. No, so dead ringer, dead ringer means uh, identical. In other words, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, one thing is a dead ringer to another. They're identical or they're very similar. So like someone that looks like you would be a dead ringer for you. Uh -huh. So if I saw it, so a dead ringer for love would be your idea of what you see as love. And that's so what the song is all about. Well, no, the song is yeah. not exactly about that, but the what? song is about... The song is about a way of life that seems to go about the world. It's about, it's basically about picking up a girl in a bar. Uh huh. <laughs> and that's what you're doing. <laughs> well, and yeah, then, I yeah. went into a bar and picked up Cher in this in this film that you're going to see. Cher's, uh, Cher yeah. did the duet, and the reason Cher I think did the duet is because nobody in their right mind would ever put me and Cher together to sing a song. And uh, then after oh. I did it, people told me that I was out of my mind, and I became very stubborn because the girl uh, sang the song great. She it sang her ass fantastic. off. You know? yeah. So. That was the we'll bottom line. We'll see it later. All right. We're um, going to see it now. Yeah.